So now it's my pleasure to introduce Governor Gray Davis, who was elected as the 37th governor of California in 1998. Prior to serving as governor, he served as lieutenant governor, and he was previously a state assemblyman and then chief of staff for Governor Jerry Brown. Both in his time as governor and since then, I know for sure that Governor Davis has been a leader on issues from health care, affordability, to environmental protection, and I know that he cares deeply, deeply about this issue of homelessness. And he knows that this is a major challenge that the state and our community must address. So please join me in welcoming Governor Gray Davis. Thank you, Jack, for your leadership. Um, Saul Price was a visionary. I had the honor of spending a lot of time with him. He cared deeply about people uh, who are on the lower economic scale in California and, and had a lot of housing projects, uh, Barrio Logo being one, uh, that um, uh, put his money where his mouth is. So you're, you're honoring a great man in heading up that institution, institute. Governor Schwarzenegger and I were talking earlier, and I think I've set the Guinness Book of Records for visits by an ex-governor to the Schwarzenegger Institute. <laughs> Everyone thinks we don't agree on anything. We agree on a lot of things. Uh, I was proud to sign the first uh, climate change bill in America, tailpipe emissions by Fran Pavley. He signed the boldest uh, uh, bill in America, also by uh, Fran Pavley on cap and trade. We've worked together on voter on citizen redistricting, on public safety, and a whole bunch of other issues. So I'm very pleased to be here again, which is either my fourth or fifth time, depending on whether you count the time your institute went to UCLA, and I participated. Um, I want to, uh, I'm here in the capacity, uh, in my capacity as co-chair of the Southern California Leadership Council, which is largely a business group. Um, I want to introduce my uh, co-chair, Julie Miller Phipps, who's the president of Kaiser in Southern California. S Julie, stand up. Thank you so much for being here. They've made a $250 million commitment to housing, uh, for low-income housing and for the homeless. Um, it's a great honor to work with her. Also, we have here today um, from the Institute, David Wolf from Acupunct from, from Accenture, excuse me, from Accenture. Uh, sorry to say acupuncture, Accenture, and Darren Ch Chidsey from SCAC. So I want to thank all of them, as well as Mike Roos, our president, and Rich Lambros, our managing director. So thank you. So just a couple quick things about the Southern California Institute. Uh, Conyers Davis came to our last meeting, and he can attest to this. Uh, we spend a great deal of time on homelessness. Uh, uh, Kevin Faulkner is a member of our institute. He can attest to that. Last, uh, our last session in January, we focused on three or four issues. I just want to mention two of them to you. And in keeping with the governor's boldness and interest in finding decisive big change, uh, there are two things that we would submit to you for your consideration. One is to look at the homelessness issue for what it is. It is an emergency. How can anyone live with uh, disease, drugs, crime, in the elements, uh, particularly this time of year, and claim that is not an emergency. Um, I remember uh, declaring a public emergency uh, two days after the lights went out in Beverly Hills, uh, the week of the Oscars, and they're saying, does anyone in Sacramento realize we have to have the lights on for the Oscars? So I declared a public emergency and built 32 power plants which are still sustaining California's electric, electricity grid today. Um, and I'm going to give you two bold ideas uh, that came out of, out of um, our conference on, um, I think it was January 22nd. Declare an emergency and not only house but treat the homeless. It is an emergency by any standard. There's no, no court in America that will throw out that, uh, uh, that action if it's challenged in court. That obviously suspends all laws. You don't necessarily want to suspend all laws. But what you want to do is move very quickly uh, to house and treat the homeless. Here are a couple of statistics. Um, 60,000 people are homeless in LA County. 9,000 are experiencing homeless for the first time 
and last year, a thousand homeless people died. I don't want that on my conscience. I know you don't want you, that on your conscience, but to make sure we don't have to live with that unfortunate reality, we have to be bold and do just something different. One, declare a public emergency. If you don't want to do that, look at the model the legislature created, legislature created, oh, maybe eight or 10 years ago for big stadiums. So if we want to build a stadium for the Clippers in Inglewood, or we want to build a stadium for the Sacramento Basketball Kings, or we want to build a stadium for Farmer's Field downtown, which no football team showed up to play in, by the way, um, which is a whole other story I can get into if you want. But uh, uh, guess what happens? They get expedited environmental review. There's a certain period of time in which all environmental litigation and all litigation has to be completed. And the process goes on because it means a lot of jobs and a lot of revenues. And I totally get that. But you can't tell me it's more important to build a stadium than it is to house and treat the least among us, the homeless. So I believe that model that works to build stadiums can be adjusted to allow us to rapidly house and, and, and treat the homeless. And it's very important to, to uh, emphasize that second part, treat. Because virtually everybody, if any of you were outside for more than two days, you'd be mentally ill or almost close to it. At two weeks, you would be mentally ill. So we, we're dealing with a population that, that uh, is mentally ill and is surrounded by disease and crime, and they absolutely need our love, attention, and that it be provided rapidly. So the... the um, There are other ways to do this, but I guess what I want to close and, and stress before I introduce Governor Schwarzenegger is that every day we delay, every day we allow a, merit, a meritless lawsuit to keep us from housing and treating the homeless is another day that someone dies. When I use that thousand figure, that's just LA County. Obviously the statewide figures are even bigger. So I want people to leave this meeting today with a sense of urgency and a sense of purpose. And if you don't like the two ideas that I've suggested, one, declare a public emergency, two, create a legislative model uh, uh, based on what we do if we want to build a, a baseball or basketball stadium and do it for the homeless, then come up with a better idea, but leave this, leave this meeting with a sense that you're going to do something to make a difference in the lives of all God's children, too many of which don't have a home, too many of which have to fight off disease and drugs every day just to survive, because there's no higher priority as a uh, citizen of this country than to help our fellow brothers and sisters, particularly those on the street. 